The Appraisal Institute defines highest and best use as the reasonably probable and legal use of vacant land or an improved property that is physically possible, appropriately supported, financially feasible and that results in the highest value. The determination of the highest and best use could require slightly different methods depending on whether the property is vacant or already improved. The same institute has also defined the factors an appraiser must consider when determining the highest and best use of a property. Each of the four tests requires significant research and expertise to determine the outcome of the tests. The engineers determine the suitability of the property for certain types of construction. Real estate appraisals will also be involved in determining whether the property is financially feasible and maximally productive. The first test examines if the use legally permitted. Examining a few different legal considerations, by law, the proposed use must be allowed by zoning regulations, and other land use regulations. If for example a building is in a residential area with restrictive covenants, the proposed improvements must not violate any rules. The proposed use must conform to all applicable building codes and height limits. In addition, the improvements must adhere to any restrictions imposed by easements on the property. Secondly examines if the use physically possible. That means the topography, soil type and conditions, lot size and shape, surface and subsurface water, and even weather patterns must make the development possible. For example constructing buildings on the side of a mountain or in a swamp probably aren't possible. Thirdly, would the use be financially feasible? Examine if the property suits the demographics and market of the area well. To address whether a proposed use is financially feasible, the appraisals need to conduct a market analysis and develop cash flow estimates. Collection of data is necessary in order to forecast construction and development expenses, operating expenses, rents, absorption rates, vacancy rates, discount rates, cap rates, and residual values. If the proposed property users meet these criteria for being financially feasible the appraisals move to the next step of the analysis. Fourthly, would the use be maximally productive? Whether the intended use optimize the potential of the land? This final step takes all of the proposed uses that meet these requirements and ranks them in order of value or rate of return. It is also helpful to consider the risk associated with the proposed use. For example, one proposed use might generate a much higher internal rate of return than all of the other proposed uses. Intuitively, these four factors make sense. If a potential use is not allowed by law and is not physically possible to construct on the given piece of land, then that use case will likely not serve as the highest and best use for that property. In cases when the use of the property doesn't fit well within the surrounding demographics and commercial activity it won't be maximally productive, in which case a different use may realize more of the potential of the property. If you have found this video useful, please like, share and subscribe for more videos and write your comments or questions.